you're a, a young designer starting out in your career, I, I think it's um, very often, unfortunately, the case, and I, I found this with all the young people that I have mentored over the year back here. in the States um, and uh, really around the world. And particularly true of today when anyone can become, I think they, they can become reasonably famous, reasonably fast. And it's totally wonderful and totally okay to be uh, a celebrity. But you will find that that does not always balance the um, profit and loss. So my strong advice, unless you're really driven so strongly by your talent, is Go and work for somebody that you admire, whose aesthetic you respond to. Spend some time learning your craft, learning about how the fashion industry works. And you will find that it is just rewarding to be successful and maybe more rewarding to be successful a little bit later in, in life than uh, maybe at 22 or 23 uh, struggling to pay bills, struggling to find a way forward. And then for journalists, if there are journalists in the room, you know, I was very lucky in my career that I, I grew up in England, where there were very, very small teams. And my, my first job, I, I had to do everything. I had to write copy, I had to design layouts, I had to cover the market. Uh, I went to the shows, I went to shoots. I mean, I was very, I was multitasking before that was a common common word and then when I, I moved to the United States to pursue my career in New York I found that everything was incredibly siloed and segmented there was a shoe editor and a fabric editor and uh, I mean there was an editor for everything and the skills that I had learned in London served me extremely well in that I, I found that I could move from uh, area to area with this, the same amount of confidence and understanding of what it involved. So learn everything, do everything, um, and just stay true to what you believe in. And uh, as I was saying in, in my remarks earlier, particularly to those of you who are journalists, we need you now more than ever to tell the truth. So, uh, The pandemic has also shown another aspect uh, of uh, national security, the importance of uh, soft power, something that Joe Nye, some of you may know his work, has emphasized. Um, our success is based on support from others, and influence is based on respect. We're a rich country with enormous resources, but we need the cooperation of others. <clears throat> That's crucial for our security. The question is, how we get that cooperation? Part of that is trust. When we withdraw from an international agreement without reason that others see as valid, that undermines trust. When we don't honor our word, that undermines trust. Globally, part of America is seen as living in an alternative reality. An alternative view of the world to that shared by a very large fraction of the free world, though sometimes shared by some authoritarian governments. The realization of that has undermined trust in the United States. To what extent will our actions reflect this alternative view of reality? When we don't seem to be acting cooperatively, but unilaterally, that too undermines trust in our soft power. And in that sense, it undermines our security. I want to talk mostly today about geoeconomics and the role of economic policy in economic security and economic security in national security. To continue with the theme of trust and soft power, one of the traditional sources of influence in the United States is respect for our economic system. That has been eroding. Uh, it, the erosion, you might say, began uh, more re most recently with the 2008 financial crisis. Uh, many countries around the world saw that as uh, evidence that the United States uh, was unable to manage uh, its economy. I think in some ways, even more telling has been the growth of inequality, uh, the uh, stagnation 
of incomes um, for large fractions uh, of, a, of, of the country. Uh, the fact that uh, uh, at the bottom, uh, incomes today adjusted for inflation are the same as they were some 65 years ago, that the median income of a full-time male worker in the United States is uh, the same level as more than 40 years ago. Uh, the fact that uh, those of limited education uh, in the United States have seen their incomes decline precipitously over the last uh, 20, 30 years. All of these undermine uh, the uh, respect that uh, our country has. Uh, we are not seen as a role model. I'll return to this uh, soft power and our influence with others both our strong allies and those rightly who under a scrutiny for, for the bad behavior that existed within the industry to be able to understand what had gone wrong and to be part of the process to correct it was was so important to me and you know, I'm not going to list all the, the other things that I do, but I, I think when you achieve some status in the work that you do, you have to be able to balance that with what you're going to do to give back to a world that has been so generous to you, and I am so grateful for that.